Come closer, guys. Come closer. Come closer. Oh, okay, wait. Okay, that is better. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. That I thought I'd just quickly come on here and do a QA and a because I've actually never done a Q&A and I always say that I'm going to do one on my channel but I've actually never done one. Anyway, for those of you guys who are new here, my name is Maria and on my channel I create videos around nursing and lifestyle. I'm trying to get to 10k subscribers. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I'm out of breath because I've been singing and dancing. <sighs> So I basically logged onto my um, YouTube studio and I'm basically just going to respond to some of the comments that you guys have made and um, answer some of the questions that you guys have asked as well. So the first comment is in relation to my video where I was talking about, you know, student, um, where I was talking about mentors on oral friends. And this girl said, I'm so scared, I just started my nursing degree, thanks for this. And I've had quite a few comments on this video, I'll leave a link up here or maybe I'll put a picture, I'm not sure. But I've had quite a few comments on this video about people being scared of their mentors and that is not what I wanted to get across. I just wanted to get across that this is a professional environment. The relationship that you'll have with your mentors is not the same as the relationship that you had with your college tutor, that you had with your nursery school teacher. This is like a professional relationship. And from what I've observed as a student nurse and also from what I've observed as a registered nurse, I've been a registered nurse for two years right now, is that sometimes some student nurses overstep the boundary and sometimes some registered nurses who are your mentors overstep the boundary. So yeah, in no way did I create that video to scare people. I just created it to let people know that this is a professional relationship. Know what it is that you're going in for. Know what it is that you're trying to get and leave. Don't try to be mixing friendship and all that stuff. But I do want to do a follow up video where I talk about, you know, the four different types of toxic mentors, how you can kind of wiggle yourself out of that situation. And yeah, so that wasn't the aim of that video. All the mentors that I've had, all of them were absolutely amazing. But again, like I have said, I have seen people fail their placements last minute because of, you know, unnecessary stuff that didn't need to happen. Next comment, a lot of the comments are like, oh, I have my nursing interview tomorrow, I'm so nervous. Don't be nervous, guys, do not be nervous. I guess it's easy for me to say because I rarely ever get nervous, but don't be nervous. As long as you've done the prep work, I watched my videos, you know, looked at the essential or desirable criteria on the website of the university you're applying for, if they have one, you've practiced and you've read the relevant documents, I do have a video that goes over the relevant documents and I do want to do an updated video on that, then, you know, you should be fine, don't be nervous, you know. If you really want to get a place at university and if you've done all the prep work and you don't get the place, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Like, you'll literally be fine. Like, it's not the end of the world. Um, on my video, choosing your nursing speciality as a newly qualified nurse. Someone commented, Hobby Hope said, how about pay to do with each speciality? Can you do a video on that? And that's a really interesting comment. And I'm surprised that she's the only one that's commented about pay and speciality. But pay and speciality will pretty much be the same. So don't think that because you're working on ICU um, in comparison to like a general orthopedic ward that you're going to get more money as soon as you start out. When you qualify, when you start as a band fire resident nurse, chances are all of you will be on the same pay salary. Whether you work on ICU, HDU, sexual health clinic, renal ward, neurological ward, mental health clinic, in terms of pay, they all use the agenda for change pay scale. If you don't know what that is, I will leave a link in the description box below, so make sure you check that out. I do, however, have in mind to do a video about not negotiating your salary as a newly qualified nurse, but just kind of talking through a bit more about um, your salary as a newly qualified nurse. Because, yeah, I do want to do a video about that, because I know when I got my first job, I believe I was right at the bottom of Bun 5. And if I'd known what I what I know now, then I would not, yeah, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, I was at the bottom of band five. And if I know what I know now, then I probably would have contested that at the time. So I do want to do a video where I kind of talk about that. Um, yeah, Congra another video, um, London flat tour, apartment tour, empty and needs work. Guys, I don't live in London. If you watch my video, you know I don't live in London. I work in London. That was the most clickbaity title I put my video. I even put on the description box below of that video that I don't live in London. 
but people still thought that I lived in London and as a result I got more dislikes than I usually would on that video but I'm guessing people felt sidelined because they didn't read the description box but she says congratulations Maria your videos inspired me a lot thank you thank you and that's a comment from cute big girl so Tilly Robinson comment comment is saying I was wondering how or when you could incorporate the purposeful ways of knowing after reading in some depth I would like to add the knowledge into my answers somehow that is a very good question and I appreciate that if you know it's not something that you're aware of or if you're in sixth form if you're in college you may not know how to incorporate some of the documents that I shared with you um, in some of my previous videos, I've shared a handful of documents that I believe you should read before attending nursing interview and after before writing your personal statement. And one of them was Barbara Carper's Four Ways of Knowing, which basically says that nursing knowledge is the right form for different areas. Make sure you check that video if you haven't done so already. So a simple way that I can, the most basic way that I can think of incorporating it could be a very simple question. Chances are you'll probably be asked, name, you know, three skills that nurses have or something along those lines. Off the top of my head, I'm just going to go straight to the six C's and I'm going to say compassion, competence, and then I'm also going to say courage. And then when you ask that sort of question, don't just list the, um, the competencies or the skills. Um, expand upon them. So you could say um, compassion is one, compassion is very important, X, Y, and Z. When I look at the um, four, Barbara Carpenter's four ways of knowing, it lies very closely with the ethical and the... Um, the um, the ethical and the aesthetic way ethical aesthetic science empirical it lies very closely with the aesthetic and the um ethical ways of um, knowing and then you could you could even go on to say if you want to elevate your question even further you could even go on to say that how um some people may argue with you some people may say that compassion is not a nursing school because it's not something that you can measure and then you could say this is you know complemented with the skill of competence or the skill of courage, which one could argue is very lies very closely with the scientific way of knowing. And then you can just go on to say that how all of the skills together make the ideal nurse. So that's kind of how I would incorporate that into my question. Obviously, I would you know do a bit more revision and I would polish my response up, but that that's how I would um, that's how I would in, that well that's one way that I would incorporate that into my questions if it's something that I want to do. At the same time, if it's not something that you're confident in doing, then don't do that. But if it's something that you think you could be confident in doing with more practice, then that's a very simple, you know, a very simple way of incorporating that into your question. Really helpful, thank you. I start on the RNDA, Resident Nurse Degree Apprenticeship Programme in one week. That is a comment from Amnimom. Congratulations, Amnimom. <laughs> Um, Maria Abby, this video is just so insightful. I'm in third year and our final exams is on the 5th of Jan 2021 in two days. And I commented all the best, all the best guys with all your exams. Someone comments to say, Maria Abby, I need your help. If you guys need any help with your personal statements, if you need help with any essays or assessments that you have, then make sure you visit www.nursingpersonalstatement.com dot co dot uk you can literally upload your work for me to have a look at within three days i'll send it back to you bob's your uncle thanks a lot for this video i am student nurse in year one and from january i'll be in my first placement i'm a little bit scared because i do not have any experience in a medical area although i have experience on working with people i will write these things mentioned by you in my notepad thanks for sharing it yes and I come to saying, honestly, there's nothing to worry about. I think I may have scared a lot of people in that video, like I said earlier. Guys, don't be worried. Go in there with confidence. Go in there what it is, knowing that you what, go in there knowing what you want to know and knowing what you need to get and leave. It's fine. Like, there's nothing to be nervous about. There's nothing to be nervous about. Hi Maria, I like your skin complexion. Can you please review your skincare routine, please? Thanks, guys. I do have one video where I talked about my nighttime skincare routine and honestly not much has changed. I use a simple foaming face wash to wash my face and then I use a Biore um, exfoliator. Sometimes I'll follow that through with a very simple face mask. Once in a while I'll use the ordinary AHA BHA mask exfoliator thing. Is that that red liquid is all over TikTok. That's why every time I go to Boots there's none there, like I ran out of it and I can't get any because it's sold out at Holland and Barrett and Boots as well, I'll have to check actually if they've got any. 
and then I use the key is my Sukin facial moisturizer that again is also sold out and I am completely out of it I've been out of it for a week but I do want to say that in a lot of my videos not all of them but right now I'm wearing makeup so that's maybe why you think my skin complexion is really clear but I know my skin is okay but I do I probably say maybe 40% of the time in my videos I am wearing makeup right now I am wearing makeup did you do a master's after your undergraduate degree before working full-time as a registered nurse you guys don't put no commas or full stops it's so hard to read your questions sometimes oh so what i did i did a four-year undergraduate masters of nursing degree program like i've mentioned in several of my videos guys please make sure you watch the entirety of my videos but i signed on to a three-year undergraduate nursing degree program and then in second year i had the opportunity to add an extra year so rather than finishing with a three-year undergraduate bachelor's i finished with a four-year undergraduate master's and that's what i ended up doing so i have a master's in adult nursing if I want to do another master's, then I can, I can go ahead and do that. I can get a second master's if I want to. Someone said, well done, sis. Thank you, Jalei Aye. Same to you. Well done to you. <laughs> um, thanks for talking about this book. It's been delivered to my house today. I've told two of my nursing friends about it. I'm going to start reading it tonight and hopefully understand how to do a literature review for my dissertation. This book, guys... If you haven't got that book and you need to write your dissertation, make sure you check out that book. This book, I honestly believe it saved my life. Like, it actually saved my life. Someone else commented to saying, I've seen you at X location yesterday. I was going to say hi, but I wasn't sure if it was you. Guys, if you see me, say hi. Like, legit. If you see, Obviously, if it's hella dark in a car park, I'm at a cash machine. Don't approach me because I don't like it when people do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Why, why do people do that? But if it's like daylight and it's, you know, appropriate, then yeah, hello, come over, say hi. I'm friendly, I don't bite. I appreciate it sometimes. I think I've got like, I'm working, I'm working on my RBF, resting something face, because sometimes <laughs> I'm working on it. But yeah, come and say hi. A couple of you guys have said hi. So, hey, nice. Thank you for approaching and saying hi. Who believes that nurses should be paid more? Yes, nurses should be paid more. I'm actually going to um, apply for um, an agency nurse. I'm so excited. I've already got my video ideas planned out to take you guys on the journey with me. Um, a handful of you guys have said, I've sent you an invite on Instagram or something along the lines. Someone, Adebola Daisy said, I've sent you an invite on Instagram. Please accept my request. Guys, as of now, I've been off Instagram for a very, very long time just because... What did I comment? I haven't been on Instagram in a while. I will do once I look back in. I haven't been on Instagram probably for like a year now. I've been on it just to like contact some people, but I haven't been on it to like scroll and see what people are doing or upload any pictures. Just because I think like, I think social media can be very, very toxic. I don't care how mentally strong you are. Social media can be very toxic. And I even took, some of you guys will notice that I took a break from YouTube. I've been off YouTube for probably like over a month now. And I take regular breaks when I need one and when I want one. Just because sometimes it can be very toxic. I doubt that I'll ever be kind of off YouTube for this amount of time. Just because now I've gotten into a routine or I've gotten into the mindset that as crude as it may sound to some people, social media is a business. Guys, it's literally a business. Put the information that you want to put across and be done with it. I'm not the sort of person who's going to be on Instagram scrolling for like 10 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour at a time. I'm just not that sort of person. Likewise with YouTube, I'm not the sort of person who's going to come on YouTube and just be scrolling aimlessly through videos. If I come on YouTube, it's because I want to see X, Y, and Z. I look at X, Y, and Z and then I come off. Like mental health is so important and social media is a blessing and a curse at the same time if you don't know how to use it. And at the same time, social media is like virtual life. What about real life? Like I actually have a real life. N not that people who are on it all the time don't have a real life, but I also have real life. I also have people around me that I want to cater to, that I want to be with, not just the people online that I've never met and who don't always have my best interests at heart. Like I say, if there's someone that I really want to contact or if there's someone that really wants to contact me, mate, you got my email, you got my number, call me, like literally call me and I don't feel the need to be on social media all the time to do that. Yes, I do like social media. I like uploading videos. I like, you know, posting vlogs here and there, 
but at the same time it's not my life i've got other stuff that i'm doing i've got bigger fish to fry in um a sense yes i do enjoy it but there's a whole bunch of other stuff that i also enjoy doing as well like cooking <laughs> um Someone again on the videos about nursing mentors, just to kind of support the point that I said, some people do have negative experiences. Someone said, thanks for the heads up, I was in the same situation just recently. It's not easy. No, it's not easy having a bad mentor. I've seen, you know, colleagues of mine who were on my course who had bad mentors. As a resident nurse, I've also seen student nurses who have had bad mentors. It's not an easy thing and I just want to enlighten people and let people know um, around it. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to leave that for now. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like this, a Q&A, this was just a random Q&A. Like I've literally just gone on my phone and just answered and commented on any question. So if you want me to do a Q&A specifically about nursing interviews or specifically about, you know, being a nurse or specifically about whatever topic, then let me know and I can collate all of those questions and comments together and present it in a video. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and um, yeah, someone said do you think there'll be interviews at the universities because of COVID? No. Universities are not above the law. If the government says you've got a lockdown, I've put check government guidelines. If the, if the UK says you have to be on lockdown and you can't even travel to see your grandma, how the hell do you think universities are going to invite you to an interview? Chances are it'll be, um, it'll be online, like face to face online. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.